Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about Magic Online and the core development problem of Magic Online. So I used to own a software company and I have a GitHub, so I have developed some really cool stuff. The GitHub is gutterless, which you guys should know by now because there's, I, I think, a few contests ending hopefully sometime soon under gutterless. Now, um, I developed a lot of really cool programs and I've worked with teams. I worked with a team of 45 people, 44 of them in India. Uh, so I was, you know, working late at night and that's why I make all these videos late at night because I'm with my developer. I used to be with my developers for about six months. I was just working with developers after, actually more than six months now. Think about it, at least two and a half years I was working with these same developers to make cool stuff. And one of the most interesting problems about Magic Online is the scenario that it has not really been modified or changed. I know people will say, oh, this update, that update, but there's a reason that it looks the way it looks and it hasn't really changed. And that, that reason is because, uh, simply put, it doesn't make sense. Um, it does not make sense. And here's, here's what doesn't make sense, is you live in a digital environment. Um, just like Hearthstone. Hearthstone is a game meant to be digital. Uh, one of the biggest problems I feel like what M Magic has when to go digital is R&D. R&D will make code cards that they know are extremely difficult to program in. So let's say a card is made and you have to include it and it has all these bugs and it has all these issues and you already know as a developer, you can probably look at a list of cards and be like, oh shit, like look at these cards. I can't develop. This is going to give create tons of bugs. You already know which cards are going to be, give you trouble and which cards are not. And as a developer, whenever I look at a card, one of the first things I think about is, hmm, this looks kind of like a hard card to do code. And even the foil card has is coded differently than a non-foil card. So non-foil card can have different interactions than a foil card. And you might ask why that is. It's because the system they're using is somewhat outdated. Uh, one of the biggest dangers of having a program that isn't um, re-ramped. When I mean like redone or like, I mean scrapped and then redone completely, is you have all these random code that slows down and, and I know Magic Online has this because whenever it goes into, whenever it takes up like too much RAM and it's like just like tanking your computer and slowing it down and making it shut itself down, because of data caches and things of that nature, it's because there's too much useless code. So just imagine a mobile app made like 15, or like let's say five, seven years ago even. So the way that you would code would be different from now. Like iOS has Swift 2.0, which everyone's coding on right now. It's simpler, it's cleaner. So if you were coding on the old stuff, not only would it really not work, even assuming you were really great at that coding, it would be slow as crap because you would just have all this wasted code lines. And that's what Magic Online is. Magic Online is a group of developers who made it 10, 15 years ago and they just kept adding stuff to it. They kept adding stuff to it, but they never, re they never redid the entire program to make it modern. So what you're looking at is you're looking at a antiquated program that looks like it's on Windows 95. Like honestly, it looks like a program on Windows 95. Like it probably has not changed very much since it first, I remember getting a CD in like 7th edition or 8th edition that you could plug in and download it. I don't think it's changed all that much from that. Uh, and so number one, it's not a digital product. Um, and R&D makes cards that will be inherently difficult for those developers to deal, deal with. Number two, apparently they're not paying developers very much money and they're using interns and just not, great talent. You don't have the talent necessary to remake the whole thing, to just scrap it and say, hey, we're going to redo every single thing. You can still keep it operational, but then on a different developer server, test it, right? Do beta testing. And I mean, tons of companies do that, but you really need the team and personnel to do it. And thirdly, I think there's this, um, and I found, I found this out with my own team, uh, sometimes developers will put pieces of code that only they understand that way you can't fire them. And that's what happened to one of my programs. Uh, one of my uh, projects was these developers coded in a language that I didn't understand. Uh, what were they coding in? Node? They were coding in JS Node. 
uh, using Heroku app and just like random stuff that I typically don't use. I like JavaScript, I like Python, I like, um, they were using MangoDB. Now I know what MangoDB is now, but I didn't know what it was back then or how to use it, how to code in it. Um, but essentially if a developer is making stuff that is extremely specific, it is really hard to find a new developer to work within that code. Nearly impossible. So when they leave, you're kind of screwed. So you're, you have two options, keep paying them and having them perform poorly or don't pay them and then have them leave and then a bug happens and they are the only one who knows how to fix the bug because they're the only one who understands this program because if you bring in a, another senior developer and they look at the code, they're going to think the code is trash. Every developer thinks pretty much every other developer's code is trash. That's just how it works. Like I look at some other people's code and I'm like, ah, oh, I can't work for that. And people look at my code and they say they can't work for mine. Uh, it's because what we are all uniquely trained and a lot of us are self-trained. I'm self-trained and the way we learn to code is completely different. So the way that I do my comments, the way I do my documentation is very different from uh, probably, you know, that senior developer at Google. Anyway, bye guys.